Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have kind of an interesting guitar. It's not something I would normally buy, but a guy really wanted that Les Paul Artisan I featured a week or so ago, and he was just a little bit off from being able to purchase it all in cash. So I took this in simply to help that guy get the guitar of his dreams. So this is a parts caster. It's not actually a Fender Telecaster. You have an authentic Fender neck from around 2006. It looks like the date at the very end of the neck says March 1st of 2006. And then the back side of the neck has a stamp that says April 3rd of 2006, along with a barcode and the inspection signature F Perez. The body is a Warmoth body. It's lightweight ash. To give you an idea, this guitar weighs just a little over seven pounds. And you have a TV Jones brand TV Classic bridge pickup. These are made in the USA and it really does have a nice bitey telly tone to it. I was definitely surprised that it sounded as good as it did, both clean and distorted. The pick art I currently have on it is from Deco Boom. They call this the red tail stripe design. And I believe this was a custom order for this style. You have two 500K CTS pots, Fender tuners, and a Fender bridge with metal knobs. So the final thing we have to go over with this part caster is the finish job. Now this is what is known as a pinup girl. If you ask my wife, she thinks this is a sexy George Washington. <laughs> and ever since she said that, I can't look at this guitar the same because that is totally George Washington's hair. But this artwork was done by the artist Sarah Ray. Now Sarah's not just a nobody who just paints guitars and just happened to do one of these. This is what she does for a living. Uh, she's an artist, I guess she does tattoos as well, but she works with Fender, Gretsch, and Jackson quite a bit to create custom one-off guitars. Now, they're not all pinup girls, but it seems a lot of them have a woman-type theme, but Sarah is capable of a lot of different artwork styles. I really like her work on Gretsch guitars. Her whole style really captures that rockabilly theme with the F-holes. Her art style's not necessarily for everyone, but I'm sure if you look at all of them, there's at least one you'll like. Now when Sarah does these custom commissioned works, she likes to finish these guitars in a thin satin or matte finish. I was reading an interview, she says she hasn't even done a single one in gloss. But I can't say I'm the biggest fan of the cosmetics of this guitar. I think this guitar would have looked a lot better if we had a rosewood fretboard instead of maple. Because then the brown and red in the rosewood would kind of match with this orangish red color and with Washington's dress here. Another thing cosmetically is this pick guard. When I had got it, it had a Warmoth pit guard on it, but when I opened the case, this was sitting in there, and I was like, oh yeah, we're putting that thing on, that looks great. Because the other one, it was just pure black, and I really didn't like the guitar's vibe at that point. But once I stuck this baby on, oh, it looked a lot better. Sarah also likes to distress her works. You can see right here where there's some authentic looking wear by the pickup. You also have some in this picking area, as well as another resting spot for your arm. And that's something that she does in pretty much all of her works. She takes pride in getting the nitpicky details right. For example, on this guitar, she doesn't just have wear all over the place. It's only in the areas that would naturally get worn from a heavily played guitar. And that's something a lot of people don't really do when they create custom works of art. And that's ever apparent when it comes to guitar merchandise. The end results usually don't look very good. Like on those pens we reviewed on Would You Rock or Not, they just look awful as the end result. So playability of this thing, 
I actually really enjoyed playing this once I sat down and started playing it through my Mesa boogies. It's set up very well. It's very easy to play up and down the neck. There's not a lot of fret buzz even up in the higher registers. And when I got this, the pickup didn't have springs to raise it up. So it was like flush against the body and you can hardly get any output out of this thing. So I went ahead and added some springs. That way you can adjust it a little bit higher. And that really brought this guitar to life. I was surprised at just how good this guitar was with only one pickup. I find that the roll off on this volume knob is quite extreme to the point where you can have your Marshall or Mesa boogie cranked for a nice distorted sound. But if you turn the volume knob halfway, you have your clean sound back. So you don't have to worry about a foot switch or going over to your amp and switching channels. You can really just control that with your little volume knob here. I don't use the tone knob that much, but you can if you want to kind of help color the tone. But for the simple layout of this thing, I think it sounds really good. From a demoing perspective, I love guitars that are just one pickup with nothing fancy because I can actually just focus on playing something on the guitar instead of, okay, got to do bridge pickup, got to do neck pickup, got to do middle pickup. It's a lot easier to demo these kinds of guitars. Now, I think this guitar would have looked really cool with just a humbucker in the bridge or maybe just put a humbucker in the neck as it sits now. I kind of took a few photos mocking that up. Let me know which one you think would look best. Or would you prefer just the way it is now? So what's something like this worth? Well, an authentic USA Fender neck. Eh, you're looking at about $300. The body itself used would be worth around $150. An ash body from Warmoth Direct is about $250. The pickup is about 130 bucks new, so used value probably around, you know, 70, 80 bucks. The case it's got, it's not the best case in the world, but still probably worth 50-ish. And then you have your other miscellaneous parts like the bridge, knobs, wiring, and tuners. That's probably 150. And then the only variable is how much does the artwork add to it? So you're looking at about $730 if you were to piece this guitar together yourself buying strictly used parts. And if you did it with new, it would probably be around a thousand plus the artwork. I try to find how much Sarah would charge. I doubt it would be any cheaper than like $600 because she has to finish the whole guitar. I could be way off on that. She might charge over a thousand. I really don't know that information. If you're watching Sarah, you're more than welcome to post your information in the comment section. So would I suggest somebody actually buying this guitar and gigging with it? Surprisingly, yes. I thought this was just going to be kind of a wall hanger. I would just auction it off or something. But this guitar actually surprised me. I think this is definitely a giggable guitar. Whether you enjoy Sarah's artwork on the guitar or not. So now that we've learned a little bit about this interesting Sarah Ray Telecaster, let's go ahead and hear how she sounds. <laughs>
Now that we know how this guitar sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. Now this guitar is actually in pretty good shape. This was purchased as a wall art guitar. I think he said he paid around $2,000 for it and he'd never really played it. So again, this is an authentic Fender neck and that's why I chose this one out of the two guitars he offered as the partial trade because I figured, well, I'll probably have an easier time selling this one. We have a medium C neck profile with, I think he said they were medium jumbo frets. Very comfortable, all maple neck that includes the fretboard. And I just love these maple fretboards. They are fantastic. I wish more Gibsons would have them. Fretware, very minimal, hardly any at all. I'm probably the only one that's really ever played this for more than an hour. Now the body, it's in good shape. You've probably got some picking scratches because I really went to town with this guitar. Something about Telecasters, I'm never really scared to just hammer into these things. Now, when I did install this new pick guard, the holes didn't line up for these bottom two screws, so I had to make new ones. And I dinged the finish like right there, just a little bit in that process. But besides that, you just kind of have the relic look. There actually is no feel difference right here. It's simply underneath the clear coat. We'll get a good look at Miss George Washington here. Back of the guitar, serial number Z60 26480, and you have a Fender 60 badge at the back of the headstock with authentic Fender tuners. No major nicks or dings on the neck or anything. I mean, again, it's a clean guitar. Not much to show on here. Back of the guitar, you don't really have any buckle rash or anything. And again, 500k pots in here. I do want to talk about the output jack. When I had got it, it kept cutting in and out. So I took it off and kind of bent the prong back a little bit. And that seemed to help. But you might want to consider replacing that should it give you continuous troubles. But after I did that prong bending, I didn't have any more issues with it. But the rest of the sides of the guitar, just light wear and tear you can see a small scuff there and the rest of that is just underneath the finish now right here you can see sarah ray's signature and here's the only real blemish on this guitar it's like a lacquer chipping or something i'm not exactly sure what that is when i had taken the input jack out there was no crack there or anything so maybe it's just a paint build up line i'm, I'm really not sure you have Fender style strap buttons on here. But overall, the guitar is clean. I mean, if you just want something to hang on your wall that looks a little fancy, I think this guitar would definitely do that. That other blank pick guard is also included if you don't want to be taking away from the pinup vibe. The black light test isn't necessarily pertinent to this guitar, but we'll do it just to say we did it. You can see the neck glows a little bit. But that is about it for the blacklight test. This guitar comes in a chroma cast case. Now this isn't the best fitting case for a Telecaster, but I've got to say chroma cast makes the absolute best aftermarket Les Paul case. I'll eventually do a full review on that one I bought, but this one you have your standard three latches and a handle, and the case itself just shows minor scuffing here and there. The interior is black, and there's no like form fittingness to the case at all, and that's the only reason why I say it's not the best case. I'll definitely put some extra bubble wrap in here to protect it during shipping. Here's what I'm talking about when I say the fit isn't good. It'll slide up and down, it'll go left and right, so you'll definitely need that extra bubble wrap in here. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Sarah Ray Telecaster guitar, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page or make an offer on my reverb listing. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.